Well, hello and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. Now, I'm excited about today's tip because it's all about probing, one of my favorite topics. In this video today, we're gonna show you how you can probe your uh, parts and set your work offsets. So, uh, excuse me for one minute. I just have to go to my offset page and answer a few questions. Stick with me, I'll make it worth your while. I gotta set my length, my width. Okay, so what I've just done is commanded my machine to probe my part for me. This is not some sales gimmick. When I walked up to the machine, nothing was set. I did everything during the intro to this video. All I did was jog my probe above the part, answer a few questions, and press cycle start. And the machine did the rest. In fact, it's done. It just set my X, my Y, and my Z work offsets automatically. This is pretty cool. So stick around. We're gonna slow things down and walk through probing your parts step by step. And we'll be sure to point out some cool and uh, perhaps little known probing tricks along the way. Everyone is talking about automation these days. And when it comes to machining, automation starts with your probing system. Now I'm standing here in front of a Haas VF2SS that's uh, equipped with our WIPS system. Now WIPS stands for Wireless Intuitive Probing System. And this system is comprised of a spindle probe. We use that to probe our parts. We've got a, a tool setting probe. We use that to set our tools. And then we've got a sensor that's mounted to our enclosure that communicates with those two probes. Now that sensor is also known as an OMI. That's Optical Machine Interface. And our tool probe can also be called an OTS, or Optical Tool Sensor. Our spindle probe also goes by um, Work Probe, or OMP, which is Optical Machine Probe. Now, Haas has made the probing process incredibly simple. Once you've walked through it a couple times, you'll be able to probe any part or tool. So, let's walk through it a couple times. Now, there are a few different ways to get to the, to the, to the work offset probing cycles on your next generation Haas mill. But I think the easiest is right from the offset page while in memory mode. So we're gonna press the memory button, then the offset button to bring us there. Now this video is all about probing your work offsets. So you might have to press the F4 button to toggle over to your work offset page. Once you're on the work offset page, you're gonna to wanna to use the cursor arrows to arrow up or down to highlight the work offset that you'd like to set. Um, in our case, we wanna set G54, so we'll highlight G54. Now our X, Y, and Z columns are blank, and we don't wanna fill these in because the probing cycles are gonna do this for us. We're gonna to wanna to use the arrow key and arrow over to the right until we get to the probing cycles the probe action column. So with G54, that row still highlighted, and now the probe action column highlighted, we're gonna choose which cycle we'd like to use. Typically, with most of these cycles, we're only gonna probe the X and Y location. Then we come back with a separate routine that probes just the Z. Now the part that I've got loaded, we're gonna go ahead and probe the outside corner, that back left corner. So I'm gonna look on my list and it's gonna tell me that number nine, the number nine cycle outside corner will do what I need it to do. So I'm gonna enter nine and press enter. Now we just follow the on-screen instructions, select probe action, then press part zero set to move to VPS. VPS is a visual programming system. Now, right off the bat, there's a picture showing us where our spindle probe needs to be located. It might be best at this time to exit where we're at, go back into hand jog mode, and jog that spindle probe above the part where it tells us to uh, in the pictures. With that done, I'll go back to my, my offset page and press part zero set. It brings us back to those VPS probing templates. At this point, it's just fill in the blank. It's really easy. No matter which cycle you choose, just answer the questions. What work offset? 54, because we're using G54. We could change it. Next, which corner do I want to probe? We're gonna go with number four, that back left corner. How far 
from the left edge, so we want it to probe. And there's more instructions that are given here in the bottom of the screen. We have a four inch block, so I'm gonna enter two inches, probe right in the center. Same question for the Y axis, three inch block, I'm gonna probe at 1.5 inches. And the Z. How far do I want my probe to move down before it takes those X and Y probe hits? Now, if you've got a funny boss, you might have to be real careful what you do here. But my part's pretty straightforward. I just have a piece of raw stock. So I'm gonna leave the default value at Z minus 0.5. All of my questions are answered. I can export this program by pressing the F4 key, and I can send this program out to MDI or the clipboard to copy into a, uh, a program in memory. But in our case, I'm just gonna follow the instructions and press cycle start to run this cycle in MDI. And just like that, we're all done. But actually, we're not done yet, hold on. We've set our X and Y, the probing cycle wrote to my offset page for us, but we've still got to set that Z. To set the Z axis, we're going to arrow over back to that probe action column, and this time we're going to select number 11, single surface. Follow the on-screen instructions, press part zero set, and it brings us to our single surface probing cycle. Now this cycle will work for your X, your Y, or your Z axis. We're gonna enter in a Z value. I'm gonna enter minus one inch. Okay, so I need to jog my probe just above my part, and then I can press cycle start to run it. Now why did I enter minus 1.0? I'm about a quarter inch above the part. You don't wanna enter a number uh, much bigger than what you need, and this is why. If I had positioned my spindle probe, let's say off the part by accident, and I had entered Z minus five inches, the probe would go down five inches, and it might hit the probe body if the probe tip were not triggered. That's a bad move. By entering Z minus one inch, what you're saying is that the spindle probe should probe in the Z minus direction, and if it doesn't get triggered by some surface within one inch, alarm out. It's going to give us a 1093 surface not found alarm. But we've got a real part in there. My spindle probe will touch off on the top of the surface and when it does it's going to write that work offset to my G54 Z offset table. Well we showed you how to probe with just a couple of the available cycles and we showed you how to do it from what I thought was the fastest way from our offset page. But there is another way. We can access these same probing cycles from VPS, that's our visual programming system. To get there on a next-gen control, you're gonna press the edit button and arrow up and over and down until you get to those spindle probing cycles. Now, all of those cycles that were listed on the offset page are also listed here. We can probe a bore or a boss or a single surface. While I'm looking here at probe a bore, um, it actually shows you where to position the spindle probe if you wanted to probe a hole. And when you probe a hole, a bore, um, it writes to more than the work offset, more than just your X and Y location. It also stores a bore diameter. But where does it put that information? Well, there's a little secret here, and I'll put it up on the screen for you right now. The size of a feature that's being probed is actually stored in macro variable 188 and you can um, have your, your angle values, if you were to probe an angle, listed under variables 189 and 192. You can use your timers and counters display page on the main page to display this information if you like, or you can use it uh, with a macro um, statement. We made an entire video on how to get these variables to display on your control, so check it out. Okay, back to, the, uh, back to my cycle. Um, we've got our webs in our pockets, and we come back down to our outer corner. Now I showed you how to use the outer corner cycle because most of these cycles only probe and, and write to our work offset in the X and, and Y axis. Then we need our number 11 single surface to write to our Z. But for a block like this, we do have a cycle that probes the X, the Y, and the Z all in one shot. In fact, that's a cycle that I used at the beginning of this video 
during the introduction. It was our number 12 Vice Corner Cycle. This is my favorite cycle because it probes the X, Y, and Z all in one shot. Not all cycles do that. So if you're just probing a, a piece of raw stock, number 12 Vice Corner. The final cycle on this page is our Angle Corner Measure Cycle. This cycle can actually probe the angle of a part and it writes that, um, that angle to macro variable 189 or 192, like that chart that we showed you earlier. So there's more information available to you than you might think. We made an entire video on how to probe that angle, so be sure to check it out. In fact, we're gonna be making more videos on how to probe your tools. We're gonna be making videos showing you how to probe from within a program. Um, check the distance between one feature and another, right? We can uh, pokey yoke. We can make sure that a part is loaded correctly in a vise using our probing system. So be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel because you don't wanna miss any of those upcoming videos. Well, thanks for letting us be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day. Music